Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Q3 FY22 Earnings Conference Call of Kelton Tech Solutions Limited. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star 10 zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I would like to thank you all for participating in the company's earnings call for the third quarter of the financial year 2022. Before we begin, I would like to mention a short cautionary statement. Some of the statements made in today's conference call may be forward-looking in nature, and such forward-looking statements are subject to risk and uncertainty, which could cause actual results to differ from those anticipated. Such statements are based on management's beliefs as well as assumptions made from the information currently available to the management. Audiences are cautioned not to place any undue reliance on these forward-looking statements in making any investment decisions. The purpose of today's earnings call is purely to educate and bring awareness about the company's fundamental business and a financial quarter under review. Now, I would like to introduce you to the management participating with us in today's earnings call. We have with us Mr. Nirvindran Chintam, Chairman and Whole Time Director, Mr. Karanjit Singh, Chief Executive Officer, India, and Mr. Srinivas Kotlidi, Chief Executive Officer, U.S. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Nirvindran Chintam. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you, Margaret. Uh, good evening or uh, good morning, wherever you are. I uh, want to welcome all of you for our Q3 uh, earnings uh, results uh, and uh, call. I uh, just want to give you a, a few highlights of, uh, of the quarter on the numbers first, and then we'll talk about uh, uh, the qualitative part of, uh, of our Q3, uh, 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 Q3 performance. Uh, first, uh, the financial results. Uh, we have achieved uh, close to 219 or 220 crores of uh, of revenue uh, this quarter. This is uh, in comparison to last quarter of 5.2 percent growth and comparison to the year-on-year -year growth of 11.1 percent. EBITDA, you know, while there is a slight dip in EBITDA, this is partly due to aggressive hiring that we've been doing, um, building up uh, our employee base uh, for the uh, for the next level of growth. As you have heard, uh, the previous quarters, you know, we have uh, added uh, clients, and in order to support those clients, we had to staff up, and that's the reason why there's a slight uh, dip in EBITDA numbers. Uh, EBITDA, uh, while there was uh, a, a, a slight dip, you know, the profitability when it comes to the past, you know, there was an increase of 2.1% on year-on-year, on year, year on year, I'm sorry, quarter-on-quarter quarter growth. So the margins, you know, as uh, uh, because of uh, the aggressive hiring, uh, the EBITDA numbers are again a slightly dip. Uh, whereas when it comes to the EPS, I mean, almost you know, uh, the same as last quarter. Uh, our uh, uh, the number of customers that we have, we have acquired the new customers and new logos uh, this quarter is around six. I will let you know Srini and uh, Karanjit uh, give you some little bit qualitative ones as we go on uh, with the with the with the qualitative part of it once I'm done with the numbers. Uh, on the EPS, you know, for the nine months, uh, we are at 5.29, which is slightly higher than, you know, the, uh, the previous year, nine months. Revenue also uh, is about 633 crores uh, compared to 571 crores for the pre previous year, so nine months. Uh, the num EBITDA numbers and the part numbers, you know, are almost, you know, uh, in line with what it was for uh, the previous nine months, or last, last year's nine months. Uh, and uh, that will continue to be, uh, I guess, looked at, and uh, we are expecting that to the end of the year uh, numbers will be much better than what it is for this quarter. Also, uh, we have uh, I have made some statements related to you know with restructuring the organization, and we have completed the restructure of the organization. And starting January one, uh, we are going with what we call a mission of uh, one Kelton. I will ask Karanji to briefly talk about what this one culture is meant for uh, in a few minutes. But primarily, the, the reason for the restructuring was, you know, we hired an ex external consultant to look at uh, our structure, our uh, strategy uh, in detail, 
Uh, he has done almost a nine-month analysis of how we are structured, interacting with both our customers as well as our employees, and has proposed uh, certain changes. And he has uh, uh, made an observation that because of structural limitations, you know, we are limited in the growth. And that's the reason why, you know, we restructured the organization. And from January 1, like I said earlier, uh, we are working as one Kelton. Karajit, can you please briefly talk about what the one Kelton is and what it means to us? Yes. Thank you, Niranjan. And hello, everybody. Uh, so, uh, as Niranjan said, we have a growth advisor who advised us, and uh, we've been in discussions for a few months now. And uh, we've been planning uh, the change to how better organize ourselves over the last six months. It has been through a lot of discussions. And the idea was to bring better alignment and bring all the capabilities uh, that exist within Kelton and amplify it uh, in our go-to-market strategy as well as value to our customers. Uh, this change became effective beginning of this year on 1st January. And it has been very well received internally uh, by all our employees. Everybody now understands it very well, is aligned uh, with the change that we are going through. And uh, in fact, uh, a lot of employees are very excited about the new possibilities. We have also, over the last, since January, we have been operating in the new mode and have gone to our customers and have been able to talk about it. And uh, our customers also see uh, the benefits of this and how they can derive more value. Uh, because one of the big things about when Kelton is to take all the pockets of excellence and better align ourselves and take this whole capabilities uh, to the market uh, and for our customers to derive that value. And this has been very well received. Uh, and we've had, uh, it also means there's a different thought process, a different way of operating and engaging, both internally and externally. Uh, and also employees are also very happy about the fact that this also gives them, uh, within one Kelton, uh, more opportunities, uh, global opportunities and a view across the organization. Uh, yeah, that's all I had to uh, Narendra, that's kind of uh, a brief on one, Kelton. Thank you. Should we open the floor for Q&A session? Members of the management, please confirm if we should open the floor for Q&A session. One second. Ma Margaret, uh, 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 yeah, hold on, uh, hold on for a few more minutes. Sure. Thank you, Saranjit. Sure. You know, uh, we will... Uh, be happy to answer any questions related to one culture as we go on uh, with uh, the calls and the questions and answer session. But before that, you know, I want uh, Srini to talk uh, talk us through of the new logos and the new customers that we acquired in the last one quarter. Yeah, Srini, go ahead. All right. Yeah, thanks, Ranjan. So, from a perspective of uh, Q3 FY22, uh, we have had some major wins. And I will generally brief about uh, six of those wins. I'm happy to say that three of them are in the fintech area. One is in healthcare. One is a one is one of the largest uh, equipment rental companies in the world, and and the last one is is a is a emerging technology company. From a perspective of fintech, uh, we have been selected as a preferred technology partner by one of the leading fintech companies in the US. And what we are doing for them is we are enabling advanced digital identity verification in line with the Web3 framework or the Web3 ethos. Uh, this, this is really cutting edge at this point. Uh, under this collaboration, we will be helping our client to upscale their data bridging capabilities across the Web2 and Web3 layers. And uh, we actually, in this project, are going to leverage the blockchain technology to help our client optimize their dynamic know your customer or the KYC process. So that is really exciting. 
Uh, another one of the fintech companies that we are working with is in the GCC region, and we are collaborating with them to build an innovative digital gold hedging and storage platform, leveraging gold as a non-fungible token or an NFT. Uh, these ERC20 compliant tokens will enable the client's users to buy and redeem digital gold for hedging and investment purposes. The third fintech company is uh, uh, interestingly in the, in the education lending space, uh, and they have partnered with us to digitalize their end-to-end -end customer journey. We are basically helping them to achieve uh, an agile customer experience transformation across all of their users' touch points through a mission-critical mobile application. What this app will do will enable students to evaluate different financing options. Okay. Then from a perspective of, uh, of another uh, emerging tech company, we have been chosen as a strategic technology enabler right, uh, in, in trying to disrupt the next generation uh, QR technology. And this is basically so that the, their customers can achieve a holistic experience. And we are focusing on redefining the entire user experience by building an intuitive platform to create custom, dynamic QR codes with advanced embedded real-time analytics. Then we spoke about uh, three of the FinTech companies and, uh, and the high-tech or the emerging tech company. One, one interesting, uh, going back to uh, an enterprise which is the largest equipment rental company uh, in the U.S., uh, globally actually it is one of the largest equipment rental company, has selected us, Kelton Tech, to modernize its core critical IT applications and, and infrastructure. Under this particular opportunity slash engagement, we are helping our, our clients to define and execute a transformation roadmap for their current technology ecosystem by making it future ready, secure, resilient, and scalable. The, the healthcare company that I alluded uh, for, for one of the leading companies in the US, we have been building an intelligent BI platform, the business intelligence platform, by integrating disparate data sources to enable single window tracking of workforce performance and analytics, uh, creating a dashboard of sorts. For us. And this is a global workforce management company in the, in the healthcare space. Uh, that, that's all I have. Uh, and those are six of the major uh, wins that we have had in the last quarter. Okay. Thank you, Srini. Uh, in addition to this, last uh, quarter we have launched a Humble, uh, which is an NFT marketplace. I think there was a press release that was sent out. Just to uh, add to what Srini was talking about, you know, NFT is an interesting area. There's a lot of investment, a lot of interest going on in that NFT space. And uh, we, ha we have successfully launched multiple different projects, a cloud platform solution for our customers in the NFT space. I guess, as you all know, NFT space underlying technology is blockchain. Hence, you know, that's an exciting space that, you know, we have... Uh, uh, we have expertise in, and we are working with our customers uh, uh, to launch solutions for them. With that, Margaret, can we open up uh, the call uh, for questions? Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Anyone who would like to ask a question, please press star and one at this time. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Nikhil, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Yeah, my question is to the directors. I have been listening, listening very patiently. Thanks for uh, giving uh, me an sorry opportunity. Sorry to interrupt you, Nikhil. Your voice is not very clear. I would request you to come on the handset more and speak, please. Yeah. Is it okay now? I think it's yes, okay. Yes, this is better. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. 
so i have been listening uh, to your uh, uh, presentation thanks a lot for giving me an opportunity my question is uh, what percentage of your business covers for b2b and how much percentage it covers for b2c because the uh, uh, add on customers that you have uh, quoted this is more on uh, value added solutions from the client if i can know something for the b2b okay yeah, so the Uh, the question is a little bit difficult to answer nikhil here's why i say that right uh, what when we build solutions to our customers you know it it could be internal customers or it could be external customers right primarily you know our uh, e-commerce kind of things or fintech kind of a thing that we provide a platform fund or solutions to our customers are b2c but they, with that said right there's a lot of enterprise related customers where it becomes b2b i don't have a breakdown as such but ultimately what i would say is that you know we are the customers are either could be internal or external uh, maybe you know currently do you have any uh, idea to talk about a break up is uh, on the percentage basis what would be a b2b kind of a solution that you know we're building for customers okay thanks a lot uh, now uh, i was just wanting like uh, let's say uh, you are focusing on the education line wherein a uh, set of clients uh, like uh, the one you mentioned that is students uh, the kind of students approaching you that more that's more of a consumer driven business now i was referring like uh, if i'm not mistaken there is some pharmaceutical company from us which had given uh, an order to you so in that case b2b it, it means uh, segmenting the business into uh, pharmaceutical or maybe power industry or maybe engineering industry and tapping from the marketing team of yours to this set of customers that's b2b i meant basically segmenting and then uh, focusing on these customers okay if so you are asking for the industry, industry vertical nikhil if i'm if i'm right then you're asking from an industry vertical point of view yeah that's right uh, that's right are, that's right okay we are industry agnostic we are industry agnostic right with that said there's a lot of this high tech companies now what kanji is just talked about you know and the fintech uh, the healthcare you know in these kinds of situations you know there's a blur the line is blurred what exactly is high tech versus what exactly is you know uh, you know what exactly is is, is you know consumer facing what exactly is internal facing it's always a blurred line right end of the day there are customers yes when it comes to fintech industry it is a b2c because the customers are coming online trying to do something like the healthcare there is a b2c in a pharma related company we have we may be restructuring the way they do their business internally but that there's an ultimate effect on the customers too right so uh, so let me that, that's why i said currently is there uh, do we have an internal break up of what exactly is a consumer facing versus what is internal facing no, unfortunately uh, no we don't really look at it or split it uh, no we don't split it that way we look at it that way Okay, got it. So, Nikhil, let 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 me get back to you on that. You know, we'll be happy to uh, reach out to you separately and uh, get you a break up of that. Uh, today, I don't have we don't have it off our head, but would be uh, would be glad to uh, go back and check and come back. Thanks a lot for your answers. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Neet Gada, a retail investor. Please go ahead. uh hi uh, uh good afternoon everyone uh, am i audible yes you are good okay, okay. Uh, uh so thanks for the uh, uh, great presentation on the one kelton uh, really excited to know that it is already in effect so uh, the uh, the first question goes here uh, you said that the main objective i think one of the main objectives behind the one kelton program uh was to see some uh, operations getting streamlined and also to have some uh, significant uh, rise in the margins uh, going forward however there is not a forward looking question uh, uh the, after the integration it would be great if you can uh, tell us as to uh, what has been uh, the growth uh, in the ebitda because that has been a line of concern on the balance sheet if you see uh there's not much growth observed uh, except for a little bit maybe so uh half since there's already been a month uh, of it being in use maybe you can throw some light if you can on the uh, one kelton and uh, uh margins or the beta increase observed after that that is one 
another uh, another question uh, or should i ask the question after you answer this no please go ahead with it. what what the question go ahead yeah okay so another question is in the last uh, meet i think uh, uh, it was been highlighted that uh, you were trying to convince uh, some companies in the us to uh, uh, get some work uh, done in india in order to increase the margins and uh, uh, again this was being done in order to increase some uh, revenues and also to garner some more customers uh, with the increase of the margins and lower cost uh any update on the same and uh, also there was a consultant if i'm not wrong which was hired to help you guys in advising uh any inputs that you would like to share that was uh, given by the consultant if you can sure so i think that that's something uh, thank you for your questions let me start with the consultant uh so like karanjit uh, has uh, has uh, already stated you know we have hired a growth advisor he's the one who proposed this restructuring of the organization so the way uh, that is the one kelton uh, is what the current is and uh, we talked i talked about so we have implemented that he's also advising us you know as to how to approach the customer how to how to go about this uh, to get more from uh, each customer that is you know get more revenue from each of the customers so there is a strategy around that we have just started to implement it so you have to give us at least a quarter to see what is working what is not working and then come back and say okay i can give you some margin uh, um, projections or you know ebitda projections but our internal goal is you know from going from the low teens today that we are in to the high teens uh, probably in the next step uh, and not this quarter because this quarter is just you know we are implementing this there may not be significant change for this quarter but starting from next quarter is when we believe that the margin Uh, and per customer revenue is going to increase so first quarter is implementation will be probably a little better than where we are today uh, but next quarter is when we start seeing all this uh, uh, all, all the all the uh, implementation leveraging uh, all the different things that we are doing today to get more but with that said right so we are hiring aggressively i want to make sure that you know uh that also is a factor into this you know when we come to the margins uh we uh we have plans to hire about 500 people uh over the next one year and uh, uh, as you uh, as i stated earlier you know when we hire people it takes close to 5 to 6 months before we start seeing revenue coming from that from that particular uh, uh individual so that takes uh, uh, some gestation time too so uh, when we are on this growth trajectory the margins are going to increase but not as much as what we want to but our target is to get to the high teens when it comes to the ebitda numbers and get to 10 to 11% when it comes to the bottom line numbers so those would be the targets that we are trying to achieve in the near term and then the long term we will come back to you probably in a, in a, in a couple of quarters uh, based on how our implementation of one health and goals and then we can tell you you know hey what would be uh the long term uh, strategy of the ebitda and uh, and the bottom line but the near term goal again i'm repeating is to be in the high teens when it comes to the ebitda and you know get to the 10 to 11% uh, bottom line numbers all right uh, so also uh, uh in the debt uh, uh, the const- uh, the company as a, as you had already said before uh, was constantly trying to you know uh, reduce the debt uh, every Uh, but this quarter there's a sudden uh, uh, increase in the financing cost uh, 17% uh, would you like to uh, uh, i mean uh, throw some light on that and the other expenses does that uh, have the consultant cost included in it or is it something else okay so the debt is almost in line with what we had last quarter it's not like you know it has gone up significantly uh, so just to give you an idea right just the total debt is around 95 Uh, the cost of finance has probably gone up because the working capital is a fluctuation you know in that particular quarter and what is uh, but you know there is also a, 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 a what happens is you know there are renewals that happen and every quarter because we have a limit that are set you know yearly you know, all over the world right different uh, quarters you know different uh, renewals happen to our existing lines and uh, uh, and uh, typically those costs are uh, come in in that quarter that's reason why there was a slight increase and also there's a foreign exchange conversion also right so uh, when when there is a dip in rupee you know the amount might look significant uh, but you know they're almost almost flat is what i would say when it comes to the total debt part of it uh, 
so we want to reduce the uh, uh, debt, but you know, as we stated earlier too, right? You know, so far we are not taking any money uh, uh, into the company. All of it is, you know, either uh, self-financing that being the promoters putting in money, or it has been through debt. So we have to grow, uh, and for that reason, there is, you know, uh, uh, there is uh, a, a requirement for working capital. There is a requirement, as as I said earlier, also that by the time you know a, an individual that we hire starts to produce revenue, it's like five to six months away. So we'll have to incur that cost. So that there's a cost to to pay his salary, his overhead, all that stuff. Hence, you know, slightly uh, increased uh, uh, working capital limits is required. And as we're growing, there may be an increase in working capital. But you know, we are watchful, right? So if you look at it, you know, when we are in March March 31st, 2021. Uh, to now, yeah, there is a dip, uh, but you know it's not significant. Uh, ideally, we would like to bring it down, but you know that's the part of the uh, of our business where you know there is a working capital cycle that happens, and we require uh, debt to finance that. Right. And one last question. Thanks for those uh, answers. Uh, the non-U.S. Uh, uh, business and the revenues. Uh, could you uh, throw some light on the growth numbers for the same? Uh, the non-U.S. So. Yeah, so the U, non-U.S., you know, uh, Europe was a focus target for us and a focus area of geo geography. But unfortunately, last quarter, because of that Omicron third wave, right, uh, there was a lot of shutdowns and whatever we uh, anticipated that it's going to take off has not done. And even today, you know, some parts of uh, Europe are, lost, are still in a lockdown mode, whereas, you know, U.K. has opened up. Uh, we are hoping that this quarter is when you know, everything gets opened up. I think uh, the third wave of Omicron uh, is going to pass, and hopefully we get back to normal. Uh, if we get back to normal, and uh, then we start seeing you know, uh, regional growth in, coming from Europe, while uh, Asia Pacific is increasing rapidly, U.S. is growing. Uh, the new customers that you know, Srini talked about are all U.S.-based customers today, you know, uh, uh, the big wins, rather. Okay, we do have you know, wins coming in from India, uh, and you know, East, East Asia is another focus target. Uh, we, uh, because of lockdowns, you know, we can't even travel you know, while we are able to sell certain things through remote, but you know, customers you know, like you know, touch and feel, and our employees have started to travel, not internationally yet, but domestically they're traveling, uh, and uh, we're able to get a uh, uh, lot more, uh, uh, we'll be, we will be able to get a lot more uh, uh, customers and revenue coming out from these uh, from these regions, but uh, today uh, uh, the major portion of our revenue comes from you, like you rightly pointed out. Uh, all right, thank you so much. Uh, uh, it would be great if you can, uh, you know, uh, give some projection of the Asia uh, region because the NFT businesses uh, uh, for I think majority of the companies are uh, witnessing some exponential growth uh, from the Asia sector. So any uh, specific huge exponential growth that we expect from uh, the Asian region? So Asian, uh, that, uh, let, me, let me ask Karanjit to answer that. Uh, but you know, our experience that we have gained in, in the U.S. is going to help us go in the rest of the region. Karanjit, are we seeing any traction when it comes to NFT in the Asia Pacific? Yes, uh, we actually are, in fact, uh, uh, we've been invited to participate in an RFP, in uh, a recent RFP. But then again, uh, see, our focus uh, has been mostly on the U.S., purely from uh, we're able to engage better and also, uh, also the realizations are better. So what Karanjit is saying is that uh, the margins are much better when it comes to U.S. versus Asia Pacific. So we would like to focus on the high margin side of uh, the geography versus the low margin side. All right, sir. Thank you so much. Lovely speaking to you. And uh, just one last thing. Any update on the operations being shifted to India and what percentage, if would that be? We, oh, okay, sir. The operations are in India, right? Majority of our uh, employee base is in India. Uh, we have now over 1,000 plus now uh, in India. And we are the hiring that I talked about in the, just to give you a ratio, right? It's going to be 400 people in India versus 100 people in the rest of the world. Uh, wow. So that is a way of us to move uh, some of these, uh, I guess, on-site deliverables now to off-site deliverables. Uh, we are working with our customers, and I think, like I said earlier, there was resistance, but now there's acceptance because I think you know, COVID has uh, opened up every of our customers, you know. 
to 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 say that you know hey these guys can produce quality deliverables out of India, uh, and we have made significant investment in uh, coming to uh, hiring also in India, uh, going with a little bit of high high end uh, kind of uh, deliverable uh, employees. Uh, we have hired uh, 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 head of HR. Uh, from uh, uh, major organizations are coming and helping us uh, as a part of this uh, journey that we, I talked to you earlier to break that structural limitation, to give us that uh, global delivery, while we had global delivery, a, a, a higher capable global delivery team. Uh, and that is something that uh, there's a huge focus on that. That's the reason why probably some of these margin pressures that you've seen is primarily due to all these hires that we've been doing. And they are expensive resources, as you are aware, uh, bringing people on board uh, uh, to deliver this high quality uh, deliverables that uh, we want to do uh, over, uh, over to our customers. All right. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Kapil Dark from GEIITL. Please go ahead. And thank you for the opportunity. Yes, yeah, please uh, go thanks for the opportunity. Just one clarification before I start. Actually, I don't represent a company. I'm an individual investor. And I've been following uh, Kelton Tech Management's commentary since almost more than a year. It's uh, really heartening to see a lot of progress being made in terms of one Kelton uh, and some of the other wins uh, that uh, the management team actually uh, graciously discussed at uh, beginning of the call. Uh, before I jump into more qualitative aspects of it, I just have a couple of uh, very high-level bookkeeping questions. I think uh, one of this was also asked by one of the previous participants uh, about the other expenses increasing by about 17% in the last quarter. And also there is a bucket called unallocable expenses uh, of about 42 crores, uh, which is approximately 20% of the revenue. Uh, can you please throw some light on these two numbers before we jump into the more qualitative questions? Sure, absolutely. So uh, I, I guess and I, I probably missed that question. Uh, I, I did not uh, miss answering the question rather. Uh, so yes, there is a growth in other expenses. This is a combination of uh, uh, the consultants that we have hired to help us with the restructuring to subcontracting. Uh, since hiring has become a challenge world over, right? you know, we have, uh, I guess, the way the deliverables have to be met, uh, the target the deadlines have to be met. We have uh, hired some external uh, uh, subcontractor consultants to help us do the delivery. Hence, that has gone up. Uh, just to give you a perspective, you know, and just in December, we hired about 80 people. So this hiring process will take time. Uh, so while we are planning uh, for this year, uh, sometimes the hiring may not meet uh, the requirements, day-to-day -day requirements, and then we uh, get some external uh, subcontractor to help us with the delivery. Hence, you see the jump in uh, in, uh, in the numbers. Now, uh, I think you asked one other question. I missed that question. Can you ask the second question? Yeah, uh, sure. There is a, actually, uh, yeah, common expenses. I'm sorry. Yeah, you told me about unallocable expenses. So we are right. trying to do segmental, right? We we do segmental kind of uh, revenue, segmental kind of expenses. Sometimes we have what we call the shared services. Uh, 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 people and those are not easily break, uh, uh, broken into. Hey, this is for digital. This is for enterprise, or this is for uh, the uh, professional services. We got the thing. That is what we call by un unallocable expenses. Uh, there are corporate expenses. How do you allocate that? Now, yeah, we can go and say, okay, by revenue we can allocate, but that's really not the way it is supposed to be. You know, we are getting better at our reporting. But this is purely to do with anything that is a shared services which we are not able to allocate. You know, we are just putting in that bucket uh, while we are refining that as we go on. Uh, and our auditor is helping us uh, uh, with some of these you know, breakables. Uh, we are, again have got some external consultant to help us with better reporting, better breakup. So there is a lot of stuff going around uh, that behind the scenes uh, that you may not see. Uh, that might reflect in some of our balance sheet items, uh, but we are making progress towards uh, being able to allocate to the granular level uh, of these expenses and you know, leverage uh, uh, from the consultants, external consultants who have been there, done it, uh, to uh, help us uh, do better reporting. Great, sir. Great. Uh, no, right. I hope for that. I answered your question. 
yes 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 uh, thanks for that uh, really uh, uh, fair enough uh, one more question sir uh, i see that uh, the stand alone results when we look at it uh, the numbers are almost you know uh, 16 17 of the overall consolidated result so uh, do i read it right that the stand alone uh, entity that is the earlier kelton tech uh, actually when it comp- when compared to the subsidiaries overall uh, is it really that size uh, in terms of revenue and uh, other uh, allocation uh, generally actually what we see is even if yeah sorry please friend yeah good so please go Uh, no, no. Basically, j- j- so let me answer. Let question. me answer that, and then you can ask your follow-on questions, right? Absolutely. See, not yes. is not uh, not a, not a standalone. Uh, I guess the, probably the way you're reading the standalone is 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 probably a little bit misleading. Is what I would say. Here's why I say that, right? When we do uh, billing to our customers, anything that we bill from India is called. uh the standalone revenue anything that is built in our in our entity subsidiaries in the US Europe or Asia Pacific wherever that is uh customers prefer to bill uh from the local companies versus billing from india so that's the reason why the huge skewness comes in uh, the delivery may be happening from india uh but you know uh the revenue is coming through the subsidiary to india so it becomes a transfer pricing kind of a scheme so in that scenario you know what happens is you know uh, we book the revenue in us europe asia pacific versus in india so standalone is nothing but a parent company uh, where uh, we have some uh, revenue that is uh, that is you know india based business that goes there <clears throat> uh, uh, but you know consol is what you should look at it's not because of uh, uh, i think you know uh, the traditional uh, let's say the large it companies where they have branch offices we we have structured it slightly differently where you know we have entities in US Europe and and Asia Pacific that are doing both delivery as well as you know being the customer build uh, companies uh, and in many cases what is happening is because of the size of the company be it right they prefer the local uh, billing versus you know billing from india because they can reach out and touch us if something goes wrong or on a legal reasons you know they prefer uh, being in the local company versus you know being company in india got it got it fair point uh, thanks a lot for that uh, now just coming to some of the qualitative aspects sir uh, so you uh, mentioned about the one kelton initiative uh, being implemented positively can you share just a few examples i mean i, I understand the commentary but in, in terms of let's say uh, talking about a few examples if you can share how it really impacts on the ground you know the growth momentum uh, let's say the top line and the bottom line what really changes uh, prior to 1st of jan versus now that will enable us to uh, you know attract more customers and get more uh, growth and uh, bottom line uh, i'll let karanjit answer that and i'll add uh, more commentary uh, after karanjit finishes karanjit can you take that karanjit yes so <clears throat> as i said it helps us uh, or uh, it kind of aligns us better we take all the capabilities of kelton and uh, take them together in our go to market and have uh, been having much more involved uh, discussions with our customers where we are talking about uh, larger uh, being a, a higher or a more strategic partner with them uh, delivering a lot more value which could be i may be working on a certain area within digital or also enterprise having more holistic conversations uh, where we can actually uh, get a larger share of the wallet as well as increasing the deal sizes becoming strategic uh, that is one uh, major change uh, for, for one kelton from a go to market perspective and the other thing is also as one uh, within one kelton uh, though we have always been global delivery but now it is much more seamless uh, with shared teams where we cross leverage a lot of capabilities uh, both from a technical capability perspective what we call practice as well as on the delivery side so these are the two things that sort of really bring value to the customers and helps us elevate our uh elevate our uh, uh, our work with them 
and uh, you know have larger um, deal sizes or engagements with them got it sir got it so let, let me add a little bit more to that right sure. just to give you uh, see if, if earlier we have we were broken down by business units uh, based on expertise just just a uh, discussion sake right let's say uh, a customer x uh, where we were doing uh, pure play SAP kind of a stuff. That is all we were doing earlier. So that uh, the salesperson is aware of only that, he's only selling that, he's gold only to that. Whereas uh, today he's gold to, you know, hey, taking that customer X and saying, the customer X has this kind of ID budget. Now why can't we get a larger piece of that? Okay, so he is not gold for is gold while while uh, while on the revenue number, but he has to do other stuff too. So uh, that means that he has to sell digital. He has to sell you know prof uh, professional services where required. While you know we try to desist from professional services, you know those are the things that are changing. And like Karanjit was saying, right now we we are saying okay, hey, we have this global delivery that can deliver end to end for all of your IT needs. While you we were saying that earlier. The sales people, were, sales people were not gold for that. So now we've changed that whole structure there and saying, okay, you have to sell the other pieces of uh, the business too uh, and get more value from the customer. The customer will get more value from us. Now he sees that, you know, hey, we, Kelton Tech, is, is, is want to be their strategic partner versus just doing this one piece and going away. So those are the structural changes. And these, this may be, you know, May, may not uh, sometimes feel tangible, but we are seeing the tangibility of that uh, by by walking and doing what we were talking earlier. Now we are saying everybody's goal, everybody has to do this. And uh, that structural change has come about. Everybody has accepted it. We, have, we are going with individual customer and saying, targeting them and saying, okay, this is a customer that we're targeting. And, you know, we're doing full ball press, what we call the account-based mining kind of a stuff. And saying you know all the uh, different uh, I guess pieces of the company come into play and going and uh, uh, trying to get more business from that customer. Sorry, it's a long winding answer because it's qualitative, right? You just can't give you a give you a one liner answer there. No, no, it, it, it was very helpful, sir. It was very helpful, and thanks for that. It uh, really uh, threw a lot of clarity uh, around it. Uh, just, just a quick comment, actually, uh, in addition to what you just uh, said, uh, perhaps, uh, and you may already be taking care of it, but uh, you may also think, be thinking around uh, a lot of training and uh, orientation of your team around uh, the one carrying approach, because ultimately it's a cultural change, and hopefully you're already taking care of it uh, within your organization. Uh, but absolutely. That's yeah. with that. yeah. 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 You're right, so that's why it took us probably six months to implement this, uh, while we uh, tried to start working from uh, uh, one quarter prior only, but you know we all, we said okay January one is the cutoff date. Everybody is falling in line. Everybody is going through that and that training, uh, the socializing with the teams, uh, the buy-in from the teams, all that has been done. And from January one, uh, it's like you know we are we are working towards it. But we are working on that uh, one Kelton uh, structure. Sure, sir. Also, one last question around attrition. So you mentioned uh, a good number around hiring. I think you mentioned 500 uh, heads uh, target for this year. But uh, any any colors on the attrition rate that you have been seeing in the organization? Yeah, I mean, just like everybody else, you know, we have been affected by the great resignation, right? Uh, yes, we are in line with what the industry is. I don't want to say that, you know, and give you a rosy picture and say, you know, they're much better. But with that said, right, you know, we have, uh, so a little bit of golden handcuffs that we started giving to our employees with uh, employee stock options, you know, uh, restructuring their uh, pay scales. Uh, and all that has happened, uh, that also has reflected in the margin pressure, if you call it, uh, uh, because we had to uh, increase the pay scales in line with what, in, what people are getting in the industry. So existing employees uh, have uh, uh, started getting appraisals and they have got huge rises in many cases. And uh, that uh, ha has been done. So we are we going? I'm going to say that you know we 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 are not going to we are going to do uh, better than before. Absolutely. But you know, is it is it going to be the new normal? You know, we expect that you know because we are part of this NASCOM and all this stuff. It's going to take probably one quarter maybe before everything gets stabilized, or maybe worst case two quarters. So everybody you know uh, is now uh, on the same. 
uh, level as uh, I'm talking when I mean everybody, starting from the industry wise. They're all going to be in one, one uh, uh, I guess, happy medium, happy equilibrium they're all going to get to. And, you know, and the resignations would reduce. Uh, with that said, right, because you know, the obvious question is, you know, what does this mean to uh, the bill rate? So we have been talking to our customers and, uh, and uh, telling them that, you know, hey, we cannot sustain this. And many, many of our customers have uh, uh, realized that, and they said, yeah, they're, they're working with us to increase the bill rate. And there are going to be staggers or uh, laggards, if you want to call it. There'll be uh, some people that are going to come a little bit later. But, you know, many of our customers have accepted the increase in bill rate. Uh, and, you know, we'll start seeing better margins because of that again. Perfect. Yeah, uh, thanks a lot, sir, uh, for your detailed replies, and uh, uh, wish you all the best for the future. Uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you. That's all from my side. Thank you. We would request participants to limit your question to two at a time. The next question is from the line of Rishab, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Hello, am I audible? Yes, okay. Rishab, go ahead. Yeah, good evening, sir. So my question is, out of the total clients you have, can you give the buy association how many are in zero to five, oh, sorry, zero point five to one million range, one million, one, uh, one million plus and three million plus? I don't have it uh, top of our head. Uh, we'll have to get back to you on that number. But I will say this, you know, uh, the top five uh, percent of our customers uh, uh, give us about uh, uh, fifteen percent of our revenue, and the top ten percent of our uh, customers give us. Uh, uh, about 26% of our revenue, uh, so that you know we will we will look at that and we'll do that you know, as a part of uh, uh, of better reporting, if you want to call it. Uh, we call it better reporting, more reporting. We will do that uh, going forward. Uh, that requires uh, some changes within the uh, with the way we report internally, and we are working that towards that. Give us probably a quarter, maybe two quarters, uh, to be able to come up with this uh, kind of uh, reporting also. Okay, okay, fair enough. And sir, one question on PAT margins. Right now it's 8.1 and you said you are looking at uh, lower teams uh, after a couple of quarters. So uh, going forward after a couple of quarters, what's the target for PAT margins? Yeah, I don't want to go beyond the quarters. The industry average is somewhere around 18%, I guess. So, Rishabh, just like I said, right, I don't want to go beyond two quarters today because we have just implemented the 1,000. So give us a couple of quarters to figure out how this is working, what is working, what is not working. Yes, we will have to uh, change, make changes along the way, dynamic changes along the way. But you know, our target is, like I said, right? You know, we want to get into the high teams for the next two quarters when it comes to Vida. And when it comes to pass, we want to get to that 10, 11 percent range is what I would give you for the next two quarters. Beyond that, we will revisit this probably next quarter, and I'll be able to give you a better answer by then because we just implemented and uh, we want to wait and watch on that. Okay, fair enough. That's all from my side. All the best for your future. Thank you, Richard. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Varun Kumar, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Hi, everyone. So, uh, congratulations on the number. And uh, recently, I came across an uh, article in Times of India it was about uh, Hyderabad Metropolitan Water Supply and Sewerage Board. So congratulations on the project to win. So according to my understanding, it's more over AI and IoT based uh, project uh, data analytics. Uh, so could you throw some, what is the size of the project? What will be the delivery timelines? Uh, like how long is the contract signed for? Some, some details, if you know. Okay. Yeah, sure. Thank you, Gordon, for the question. Uh, yeah, that's an exciting project uh, for us. Here's why I say that. There's a lot of uh, money being spent by government of India when it comes to the Jal Jeevan mission. Uh, so this is the first win or uh, first foray into that space for us. Uh, we have been working with uh, some of uh, uh, the, uh, the governments uh, in the northeast, uh, the southern part of India, the northern part of India, uh, trying to get uh, more uh, uh, more and more uh, focused uh, uh, RFPs on these are going to be coming out. Uh, there is going to be, from what I hear, uh, a dashboard at the national level, the state level. Uh, so we are working with uh, with uh, uh, the governments uh, or entities uh, to uh, to shape those projects. 
because you know this is a new thing for them. They they know how, what what is required, what is not required, using our expertise. They're working with the with the, the different uh, state agencies and the central agencies uh, to come up with the requirements, and we will be actually participating in many of these uh, bids. Uh, with, with the expertise that we have in IoT space, with the expertise that we have in the AI space, you know, we would be uh, able to uh, uh, confidently say that you know, hey, at least some part of uh, that revenue is going to come to us. Uh, we are uh, in, in, I guess, in, a, in varying stages when it comes to the different entities out there. Uh, out there. Now, answering to specific to your question about what is the size of the thing, there are phase one, phase two, phase three part of this project. So I don't want to uh, tell you what exactly the number is uh, today because it it might vary. You know, the expectation is it's going to be probably in in in, in uh, uh, the low single uh, sorry low, low double digits uh, for today. I'm talking in crores of revenue. Uh, uh, and but you know we believe that uh, the growth on that side this is an investment for us to get into the space. Uh, uh, and uh, we expect that you know it's probably going to be significantly larger once we start. Uh, going to this, we want to start winning different uh, from other entities. Talking about the delivery timeline, there is a, uh, there are uh, milestone based deliverables. We have a six month deliverable. We have a one year deliverable in this specific project. Uh, but you know we should be able to wrap up this project uh, now within a year is what uh, uh, our internal estimates say. Uh, but you know beyond that, like I said, there are multiple phases for this. So we may really start with phase two, phase three, and phase four. Uh, where it now becomes integration into the larger IT infrastructure. That's it, Warren. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sohan Joshi, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Good evening, sir. I just want to ask, in the previous quarter, we added 20 clients, right? Yeah. Hello, am I audible? Yeah. Yeah, right, right. Right, yeah, yeah, for the previous quarter, we added 20 clients, and uh, this quarter we have added 60. So how much of the revenue of those 20, from those 20 clients have been reflected in the current uh, sales additional sales revenue of 10 crores, and how much is going to be in the successive quarters? How much, uh, I mean, what is going to be spread of these additional new clients into the revenue? See, when, when we start off a project, right, the uh, first quarter mm -hmm. of the project, after the project, is when we really begin the project. And typically, you know, we say, you know, 10% of, uh, uh, of the book revenue is what it's going to be in that. And over the next quarters is when you start seeing significant revenue. You know, I don't have the numbers, you know, when it comes to exact breakup of us, how much it came from these new customers, but we don't track it that way. That's the reason why. But, you know, as a thumb rule, 10% comes in the first quarter after we sign a contract, and the uh, rest of the night, uh, uh, probably the next of 80% comes in over the next one year, and then the balance to 10% comes uh, after that. Uh, so the, the new customers that we signed last quarter, uh, I don't believe there are any uh, uh, revenue has not come in yet, uh, but I'm talking about the previous quarter's uh, revenue, the previous, uh, previous quarter customers of the 20 customers that you asked the question about. So I would say 10% came from that. The rest of the stuff will come in. Uh, in this in this quarter uh, and quarter I'm going for. So this uh, humble humble client was been included in previous quarter as a 20 new additional client, right? And from which certain or maybe a previous would have from which the revenue has been now reflected in the current uh, 10 crores value addition, right? Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's so my an second. ongoing project, right? See, yeah. What okay. Is that you know, when we launch, right? Uh, mm -hmm. I, I just use the example of a car just to give you a perspective, right? When we ra launched, uh, 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 when we launched uh, Humble last uh, last quarter, right? Uh, it's just the phase one that gets delivered. Uh, what I what I typically explain to uh, people is, and I use the car concept where you know, hey, the first quarter you're going to get uh, is probably a Maruti. You are able to go from one place to another using the Maruti. But whereas if you want to get the Benz cars of the world, you know, it's going to take a few quarters to get us to the Benz cars of the world, where you have all the belts and whistles, and you are now, now able to cruise. All that stuff, right? So that kind of stuff is what happens. 
Yeah, go ahead. You were asking some other post. Uh, some I interrupted you when you were asking. I also, uh, I also read an article about we are targeting around 20 uh, million uh, revenue, million dollars revenue, for which we are going to hire aggressively. And I've been seeing on Twitter that you are hiring from various colleges from West Bengal and Telangana and all. So, sir, I mean, uh, what will be the revenue guidance for the next year? Are we going to cross 1,000 CR of the what is targeted after 320 million dollars? That's roughly around 2,000 crores is the target, right? So, are we going to cross 1,000 CR by the next year? And and then following, because of these aggregates showing, we could see much more higher growth for the successive years. So, when I, just, I, guess, I guess, was answering a previous uh, caller, uh, I am not going to speculate at this time what would be uh, what would be the revenue after two quarters. But I would say the immediate goal for us uh, over the next three years is to get to $200 million. Um, so, that is the goal that we have set internally. Uh, and that is what we are uh, restructuring uh, our company to be able to get to that. So for the next three-year target, we said in about 200 close, so I'm sorry, 200 million is what we are going after. And then now, uh, uh, if we achieve that, you know, and before that, that would be great. It's, uh, uh, it, it, it's what we are working towards. But our goal, right, uh, uh, on a, a conservative estimate is 200 million in three years is what we want to get to. Okay, okay, that, that's a lot. Of course, I'm going to achieve that. Right? Sir, so one more thing, there has been again a slight decrease in the promoter's holdings even in this quarter. I mean, whenever there is a promoter's holding statement out after a, after a quarter ended, it doesn't go well with the stock prices. So, I mean, what is going to be a strategy in the future? Are we going to decrease again some of our holdings or is it going to remain intact at least for a couple of few quarters? So we see, we have not sold any anything last quarter. I think any time we sell something, we have to declare to the exchange, and we have been doing that. Uh, I don't know what the decrease is. Probably it's because you know uh, of employee stocks, uh, uh, ESOP uh, that got exercised, or you know uh, that uh, uh, that's the reason why you know there may be a slight percentage decrease. But uh, the quantum is the same. We have not sold anything last quarter. Okay. And sir, one more thing, sir. Are we going to pitch anything for a stake to any FII for going ahead, sir? If we go ahead aggressively for the one Titan, and are we for a couple after a couple of years, are we going to pitch for a good FII to buy a stake in a company? I mean, uh, uh, right now, are we actively pitching? No, absolutely, we are not doing any uh, any road shows at this time. But you know, we are talking to people. When people are interested, they call us. We are absolutely talking to them. So. I um, don't, uh, don't have uh, any timelines as to when somebody is going to invest uh, in a company. Uh, we have stopped, uh, I guess, you know, roadshows probably, I would say, about four or five years ago is when we did the last roadshow. But if somebody is interested in us, we have been actively speaking to, uh, and uh, we will continue to speak to. Uh, but, you know, there is no specific uh, uh, strategy today, I would say, uh, that we are going after uh, uh, but, you know, I would say that, you know, with that said, right, there are some people that are buying who are uh, interested uh, in, in our share. And we are seeing that in the shareholding patterns that we get, you know, uh, and but, you know, we, we do want to uh, look at if somebody wants to invest uh, and we will be able to get our uh, uh, target of 200 million much faster. Uh, and we can go with a new target you know, based on investment. But at this time, right? Uh, we are not actively on a roadshow, but if somebody is interested in investing in the company, absolutely, we'll be allowed to talk to them because uh, no one okay. owner will say no to money. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. <laughs> of course, of course, of course. So, one last question, sir. For this European business, so uh, after this quarter, say from the April onwards, we are going to see some growth even much more faster than we anticipated because last quarter was affected due to Omicron. But at least we can we can uh, see some growth in European business from April, right? That's correct. That is the, that is the plan. Yes, you're right. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. Uh, the okay. So let me not get into the figures at least uh, because we can't anticipate as of now. But thanks, thanks. This was so quietly good, good help to us. Thanks a lot, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Amit Mishra, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Hello, everyone. Um, Thanks for giving me an opportunity to ask questions. Uh, sorry to interrupt you, um, Mr. May I request you to come on the handset mode, sir? You're not very clear. Ah, uh, okay. Hello, can you hear me now? Yes, this is better. Please yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Okay, hi. Uh, hi, everyone. Um, Congress from a decent set of numbers. 
Um, my first question is, I'm very new to the company and we're still reviewing our business and future prospects. So in this context, um, I was thinking it would be apt to hear the management itself, you know, regarding your long-term vision for the company. And also, um, uh, I understand uh, the current line, broadly, I understand the current line of business, what, what we are pursuing, which is standard consulting and services work. But do we have any plans to develop high margin, strong core products uh, going forward? Or do we have, uh, you know, aim to develop work on technologies that are unique and could result in patents and TMs? So the thrust of my question is on, on margins, basically, but because historically we, we have been in mid-teens at best, uh, at typical, you know, service uh, provider uh, margins. So uh, if you can elaborate on long-term vision uh, and how, uh, and what, what are the plans, basically, yeah. Okay, so Amit, to, to answer your question on the long-term vision, I'll just talk from purely uh, the premise of uh, starting this company. When we started this company, um, we started with, uh, with, a, uh, with, a, with a, a slogan where we call infinite possibilities with technology. When we started, uh, uh, we started in the new age uh, kind of uh, technology. And today also we have the same strategy where we offer cutting edge solutions using newer uh, technology. Uh, with that said, right, you know, uh, there is always going to be, you know, uh, customers that you know the service which is may not be uh, the the new uh, age cost, uh, new age uh, technology, because enterprise is typically what uh, takes what it takes is you know uh, it takes a little bit of time before they start adopting new age technologies. I guess that that line has has blurred between startups and enterprises nowadays, where even enterprises are investing in the Web 3.0 uh, that we talked earlier about the NFTs. So there's a lot of exciting stuff going on, and we are ahead of the curve when it comes to many of our peers in these kinds of regards. Yeah, we want to stay ahead of the curve, uh, and that is uh, that has been our strategy, and you know, it has worked successfully for us. We will continue to be ahead of the curve, but you know the, the margin, uh, because the, the, I guess uh, talked about earlier, right? The structural limitation was there. That was structural limitation. Now we have the move. The margin should improve. And it should improve uh, over the next two quarters is when you know it will start showing uh, with uh, uh, what we have planned so far. Now, answering question about the product size, you know, we are not a product company; we are a services company. Uh, we do have one or two products that you know we use uh, more to sell it as a platform, as a service. Uh, when it comes to the when I mean platform, right? I'm talking about using the platform to provide solutions to our customers much faster than uh, what it takes to implement something from scratch. Yeah, that is what we do, but we don't do product selling today. We have one product uh, uh, that uh, we have in the oil and gas industry uh, that uh, we have uh, delivered successfully to a few customers, has not taken traction uh, to the extent that we want to take that traction to. But because, you know, as you are aware, product takes a lot of marketing dollars, a lot of time before adoption happens. Uh, but once you start selling that, you know, uh, a few licenses, then everything else is goes straight to the bottom line. But, you know, we are not a product company, and we don't want to be. Okay. No, it's okay. It's clear. Um, so we just focus on our core areas and get strong in there. Uh, there's no problem with that. Uh, second question, um, it's more on, you know, promoter's uh, stake. I've noticed um, on the screen uh, that last eight quarters, the stake got reduced by 10%. So I just want to uh, hear, hear you out, like how it was done. It was, was it open markets or some investor uh, took it off from you? Uh, and there is also outstanding pledge uh, there uh, around 12, 13%. Uh, so why was it created and to just get some historical on it because uh, I didn't uh, research enough. And why? Uh, when can, when can we uh, expect it to be released? Um, if you can elaborate there. Okay. So I mean, yeah. So since you are not aware of historical, I'd be happy to to answer that. Uh, so let me start with the pledge part. Uh, so uh, Amit, uh, we are a first first time entrepreneur. No, I, I mean just just, just to out. just to sorry if sorry if it was not clear. But I saw the shareholding pattern of last eight quarters. Let me let me answer that. I'm answering that. I'm answering that. Yeah. Okay. 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 Let me answer that. Yeah. So, uh, so we are a first-time entrepreneur, and our family has not been an entrepreneur before. We are, uh, we are not, uh, like I said, the Tata or Abella, uh, where we have unlimited uh, uh, assets that we can pledge to a bank to get a loan. 
So typically in India, from your accent, I see that you know, may not be, uh, you may have been uh, some part, sometime outside India. In India, typically what happens is when you take loans, they want collateral. So the collateral, we right. don't have any collateral or hard assets within the company. Uh, it's all the people and, you know, the country goes as well as the asset of the company. So we had to pledge our, and uh, being the promoters, properties to get loans. And like I was saying earlier, we're not a Tata Bella. We don't have unlimited properties to pledge. So we had to give out our shares as a pledge to the banks to get loans for the company. This is not loans taken uh, for the promoter, but loans to the company. And, you know, the banks, once they get some hold of some shares, they are very uh, unhappy or reluctant to release the pledge, uh, despite, you know, uh, the, let's say, the amount of loans that they're taking has come down dramatically or the share price has gone up. So uh, we have been trying to extract the shares out of the bank, but they're not been releasing it. We are working with them. Right? So this is takes a long time to get them released. Uh, but I want to assure everybody that, you know, these loans were taken for the company and the pledge was for the company's loan and not for individual loans. Okay? So, so that is the, one so part of the question. Ah, okay. Yeah, okay. Um, and on the, the 10% you asked about, yeah. Yeah, the sale of shares, right? See, this, uh, yeah. as uh, I stated earlier on this, uh, uh, the COVID has, uh, has, I guess, opened many people's eyes as to, you know, the liquidity needs, both from an individual level as from a company level. So, you know, the same thing has re-evaluated within the family. Uh, uh, and my dad is 80 years old. Uh, he's the majority shareholder. He felt that, you know, hey, we need to retire some of the debt that we have on our personal books. So that's the reason why uh, the share, uh, share uh, sale has happened, to get more liquidity and also to reduce uh, the family uh, debt that was there. Uh, would that continue on? I don't believe so. But, you know, like I said, my dad is 80 years old, uh, so he might come and say at some point uh, say, you know, okay, let's relocate this, but at this time don't have any plans to sell the shares. Okay, that's that's fair. Yeah. Okay, understand. Um, that's it from my side. That's, uh, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. The next question is from the line of Meet Gada, a retail investor. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Happy to get back again. Uh, I just uh, uh, I just saw one interesting uh, paragraph uh, from the statement. Uh, it is regarding the live. Uh, QR uh, uh, code uh, uh, technology scanning, which is uh, going to come up with. I just wanted to ask you, the real-time embedded uh, analytics, is this technology into, ex into existence by any of the companies, or is this the industry first? Yeah, I mean, this is, see, there, there are a lot of, uh, I guess, uh, like I was saying earlier, you know, we are doing a lot of cutting-edge stuff. You know, uh, I, there are a few things that, you know, I, I, I don't want to reveal customer names, but I can talk about a few things where uh, we do exciting projects uh, that nobody has done before. Uh, I guess if you have a Star Trek uh, analogy of a bold ago where no one has gone before. Uh, so those are the, some of the uh, projects that we do. We are working for one of, uh, uh, I guess, a global uh, uh, multinational where we're doing sentiment analysis using purely what is going out there, using uh, AI, ML kind of uh, technologies to see uh, what what is uh, the different things that are going in social media? If uh, what is being sent out by individual employees is it in line with their standard uh, templates, or is it something different? Is the color scheme going the right way or the wrong way? Is there a bleeding of colors? So this this is exciting space that we keep working in, uh, and then including the NFT space, right? You know, there's NFT, you know, a lot of buzz is going on in the NFT space. Where you know people just talk about you know hey we have the number uh, humble only you know humble is just one project you know but the way we have built the solutions for that now we can list it across platforms it doesn't have to be on one marketplace to sell your digital asset it is on any platforms uh, using the standard if they start using there are certain standards that you know industry follows if you have that standard built in into the digital asset you can sell on any platform there doesn't have to be one platform so how do you do the cross listing? So there's a lot of things that we do that nobody has done before. Uh, while probably, you know, we are not marketing ourselves the way we are supposed to, 
But you know, the stuff exciting projects if I talk to individual uh, employees, they you can see that, you know, uh, the stars in their eyes when they say, Okay, what are you doing? And it goes off and you know, for them it's no brainer. Hey, so you know, hey, I'm doing this and when you start thinking back, right? And that is cutting edge stuff. Uh being augmented reality that we're working in, in this NFT space, the web three auto, you know, there's there's a, a just now people are talking about Web3 Auto, but we've been working on those projects uh, for a while. So those are the exciting stuff that we do. And for that, there's you know, for us, uh, hey, if we've done it, you know, it's nothing. It's just a standard thing. Uh, right. Well, because I come with an IT background, and if I'm not wrong, I tried Googling after reading this statement, uh, and I couldn't come across any company which is providing this so far. So I think this should have been uh, uh, one of the, uh, you know, the highlights of the, presentation, but uh, I think it's hidden somewhere in the detail, which is not fair, I guess. Yeah. Understood, but we will try to bring it up. Uh, uh, at this time, we are more on execution mode than, you know, in a marketing mode when it comes to uh, probably we should do a better task at that, and we will, we will definitely uh, start in a, doing a better job of this marketing. Thank you for pointing that out. Uh, sure, sir. Thank you. Thank you. As I know for the questions from the participants, I now hand the conference over to Mr. Niranjan Sintam for closing comments. Thank you, Margaret, and thank you everyone for uh, participating in the audience call. Really appreciate and uh, looking forward to talking to you. And uh, like uh, I, I said in every call, we would be happy to talk to you one on one if uh, you are if you are any any time uh, in Gurgaon or Hyderabad. Please do look us up. Please reach, uh, reach out to Anfam. And Anpam would be happy to set up a, a, a meeting to come and interact with our employees where we get to hear firsthand uh, from our, uh, our, our employees itself and stuff, you know, management doing and filtering and what all that kind of stuff is going on. So thank you again and looking forward to talking to you in the next quarter and install, if not before. Thank you. On behalf of Kelvin Tech Solutions Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.